This video will show how to tune a piano to just intonation at C256 Hz. Because of the length of this video, it will be split into four parts. The first part will explain why we tune to just intonation at C256 Hz. The second part will deal with the specific tools we use to tune a piano. The third part will demonstrate how to tune the piano with an electric tuning app called Airyware Tuner. And the last part, we'll be using our ears to finalize the tuning. We tune to C256 Hz because it follows the natural harmonics of the earth, which is found to be tuned at 7.83 Hz. This is called the Schumann resonance. There have also been studies of water becoming the most alive by forming the most geometric shapes at 7.97 Hz. The specific term for this is the Marion prime frequency. If we round up this number, it becomes 8 Hz. If we multiply 8 by 2 each time, we'll eventually come up with 256. 8 times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64, times 2 is 128, and times 2 equals 256. Each multiple by 2 is considered an octave from C0 to C4, which is middle C on the piano. Why do we tune to just or pure intonation? It's because the intervals follow the natural harmonics of the strings, so the intervals are in tune with each other, which in turn makes the whole piano resonate with the other strings creating extra angelic voicing projecting from the piano. Equal temperament, on the other hand, plays with dissonance in each interval, where the intervals are figured out mathematically so you can play in all 12 keys. The problem with this is all the intervals are out of tune with each other, except the octaves. Our western ear has become so accustomed to this temperament that it doesn't sound out of tune to our ears, but in reality it is. Because of this, I have to lift the damper pedal between each chord change in equal temperament. However, in just temperament, I can keep the damper pedal down the whole time between each chord change, because the chords harmonize with each other. The only real disadvantage to just intonation is I can only play in C major, C minor, and A flat major, in tune with C being the root, rather than all 12 keys in equal temperament. There is a way around this if you're using a virtual electric piano so the root key can easily be changed with the push of a button, so playing in all 12 keys in just intonation is possible. The problem with this is the sample piano are all sampled in equal temperament rather than just intonation, which when tuned to just intonation doesn't pick up the natural sympathetic resonance of the other strings harmonizing with each other. To correct this issue, a piano would have to be tuned and sampled 12 different times for each scale key. I have a separate video comparing Piano Tech, which is a model of a piano, with an acoustic piano and just intonation to show this difference. Please check it out on my channel. Here's a quick sound comparison between A432 equal temperament to A426.6 just intonation. The reason it is A426.6 rather than A432 is so the A is in tune with the C interval at 256 hertz. Let's see if you can hear a difference.
Let's look at the tools that we use to tune a piano. The first tool, probably the most important, is actually called the tuning wrench. Now this wrench I purchased from China with the kit. It was for six or seven dollars roughly. The issue I had with it from the beginning was it was just too short and you're not going to get the leverage when you're trying to tune. So you have to modify it. Get a piece of PVC pipe that's um, very tight with the outer diameter of the wrench. If it's too tight, then just sand a little bit on the uh, wrench and it will fit. And then put epoxy putty on the inside on both ends. And I used a hole tube to do that. Now the issue I had with this also is on a more expensive wrench, it's star shaped like here. And on here, it's a square shape. So the issue with that is how much play it has when I'm tuning. Now, if I'm doing this a lot, uh, I would invest in a more expensive wrench, but if you're just trying it out, this will work fine, but just understand that uh, it's not gonna be as easy, but it will be doable. But again, you'll have to modify it to make it work. The other tools we use are what's called rubber wedge mutes. And these go in between the outer strings like so. And so when you play a note, it mutes the strings when the hammer hits. So these are very useful. You must have these as well. The kit also came with these other mutes that are a little longer, but I haven't had a need to use these. The other thing that came with the kit was a what's called the tempered felt and when I unwind it notice it gets longer or here and then shorter here and the way this is used is you take the uh, flathead screwdriver and you push in between the pens like so and you, you have to use a good amount of pressure to do this and then you pull out but you're going to do the whole tempered octave right here which is middle C to C5. So I haven't had a need for this as well but it's a great deal six seven dollars and that's free shipping from China on eBay. The other tool we use is what's called a guitar pick and this is useful if I can't hear the note even when it's muted the other notes are in the way then this is very useful to use. So it's another tool we use. Uh, and the last tool, which you don't have to use, but it's optional. If you don't have electricity, this will have to be mandatory to use. Uh, I hit it, and then I put it on the piano, and I can hear a C. And that's middle C, 256. Now what we're going to use instead of that is an app called Airy Word Tuner. But before I explain how to download that and you set it up, there's a program that you'll need to use only if your piano's way out of whack. I mean, you can't even tell what the note is. It's called Piano Tech. And there's a separate video I make on how to set that up and use it for just intonation. So I hope this helps with the tools. Let's look at the Airyware Tuner app. Let's look at the Airyware app. When you open it, this is what the screen looks like. We're going to adjust some of the settings so it's uh, to our liking. First thing we're going to go to look at the upper uh, buttons on the upper right hand corner. Go to presets, select chromatic, and number two gray octave. That's what you need. And then right next to presets, select temperament, scroll down and go to just intonation. Select that and C should be set at the root. Go back and where it says 436.04 Hertz on the upper left hand corner, select that. And then where it says HZ for Hertz next to reset and the mic, select that middle button. Move the cursor to the far right. When you select it, Click back and then type in 
six, seven. Select done, and then select OK. Now, when we go to C4 now, it's 256, so that is what we're setting it to, because that is our foundation note where we tune all the other notes to. Okay, go ahead and select back. Let's look at the piano now. When you look at a standard piano, this is an upright, the other piano you have is a grand. You see a bunch of tuning pins and a lot of strings. Now, to give you a little bit about the piano, there is a lot of string pressure on the piano, over 18 tons. And on a grand, the big pianos, it's over 30. And the string pressure for each string is roughly 160 pounds. So that is a lot of string pressure. So because of that, we have to use the proper technique when we tune. Now, if we look at the piano, we notice on the far left, there are bass strings, one string per note. That's the bottom octave. And then when you go up, you have two strings per note. And then the rest of the strings, it's three strings per note. Now, depending on what type of piano you have, if it's an upright, the strings go this way vertically and the tuning pins are here. And on a grand, it's right in front of you and it's horizontal. So the strings are tuned to the left on an upright. I mean, they go to the left on a grand, they go to the right. So when I talk about strings and where the pens are relative to strings, it will be different on the grand piano. So pay attention to that. Now, before we go and actually start tuning, let's go over how we tune a note. First thing we use is mute. Now, we have to mute with the three strings, the, the strings we're not going to tune. So, if we hit middle C, which is right here, what I like to do is take my mute and to the left of the string, right under the bridge, put a mute there. So on the left side of the string, put the mute to the left, and then on the right string, put the mute to the right, right, right underneath the left mute. Now when I hit the note, all I hear mainly is the middle string. So I have three pins per string. And the middle pin is the middle string. The upper pin is the left string. And the right pin is the right string. So when I place the hammer on the pin, I want to make sure it's securely in there. Now, because this is not a uh, star shaped, it's just a square, there's going to be more wiggle here. That's all right. Just make sure it's in there securely. And I want it in the 12 o'clock position like so. If I tune like this, I put it in the 3 o'clock position, or the 9 o'clock, what's going to happen to this pen is it's going to twist more, and it's going to bend the pen more. So because we're not uh, just tuning to note, we have to not just care about that, but stability of the note, that it will stay in tune. So the best technique is try to get it at 12 best you can and when we tune we go to the pitch and we actually raise the pitch slightly and then detune it because this is tuned to 440 and it's out of tune the uh, when we tune it down to uh, a 426.6 that's roughly 13 cents down, we're just going to use the tuning app to tune first, not our ear, because we're trying to stabilize the piano. Because once we tune this section, which is what we're going to focus on first, this is the tempered section, and then we tune out.
from there called the octaves. When we do that, it's going to uh, relax the soundboard a little bit, the tension is going to relax, and then some notes are going to raise higher and some aren't, so the, the piano is trying to stabilize itself. So this first part, we're just going to use the app and not our ear, except for the unisense. One other thing I need to mention before I forget, when we tune and the, the pen is not staying, that means um, that you have to use a larger pen or there's a technique to hammer the pen or, and the, the easiest method is actually use CA glue and that is super glue actually and you put it around the pen. I'm not going to go into the technique of this. You can check out videos on YouTube. There's a lot. So just know that if the pen doesn't stay there is a way to fix that. Okay. So the tuning wrench is in. The mutes are in. We're going to hit C and we're going to tune it down. Look at the app and it says plus 40. So we're going to tune it down as close as we can. good. We're in the green zone. So what we're going to do now is pull out the right mute. And this will unmute the right string and we're going to go down a pen and we're going to detune this note as well. Now we're not going to use the tuner for this. We're going to use our ear to hear that unison note. sound right because even though this other string's muted I still hear it so I'm gonna switch the mute now from the left to the right mute the right string and now I'm gonna tune the left string okay let's test the note it's pretty close it's going a little bit in the yellow but it's green okay now there's a technique to when we tune with the hammer. I'm going to go in more into this in the next section. When we want it to stabilize, we actually tune a little bit higher and then we tune down. And then to make the string hold, we, we hit the, the key hard. It's called a blow. I'm doing it repeatedly, but you only need to do it once. So, looks like it's staying. So, that's to test it to make sure the string will stay. Okay, we're not, again, not going to do that technique. It's called raising the pitch and easing it so it stays. Uh, we're going to be more concerned with that in the next segment when we tune it and finalize it. Okay. The next note after C is D sharp. We're going to do the same thing. Put the tuning wrench on the middle, pen, and then set your mute. And wiggle it down. you're having a hard time hearing and you, you're like man I'm hearing other sounds but you actually are you can click in the app to where it says Hertz 426.67 and select C4 and you can actually hear the note and you can do that for the other notes D4 E4 okay and we're trying to hear D sharp You're still having difficulty hearing. So I'm going to remove the mutes. One technique I like to do is use a guitar pick and actually I hold down the damper pedal and that's the right pedal and just pluck the string. 
then I only hear that string because I don't hear the muted strings anymore. So that's a technique, especially when I come up here, I'm going to do this technique because it's harder to hear these notes more so than the uh, bottom notes. So let's put the mutes back. And we're just going to tune the other notes, pull the right muting wedge out. and the scale, the 11 to 12, we'll go back, and if we need to readjust slightly, we will. Let's go back, let's keep going up to D, take your mute.
back on that one. It's just a little too high, but it may be fine after you tune this middle section. Okay, I wanna... See, I was going to go this way. This way is better. Try to shoot for 12 o'clock if you can. Sometimes it's a little higher because you're hearing the other strings. It was like plus 10. Let's see what happens when we get the other strings tuned. And it's still high. We'll have to go back to that one. Let's just get these other ones approximate. Get in the middle. Just wiggling small movements. A sharp, get that more vertical. Okay, when we do octaves, we're going to do the octave now. Let's test the C. Okay, before we do that, I think with the C, we can get a little lower. We want this one to be close. Let's see if we can readjust it.
notice I was using that technique. I was going up, sharpening it, and then lowering it. Now that's where I want the C. So it's a good C. We're going to now match it to this C. When we do octaves, these are the C's. Uh, every two black keys, these are the octaves. And then the bottom octave. So we're not going to use the tuning app, just our ear. bottom note when you're doing the unisons, just the actual note. Okay, that could still be better. So, we're going to try it again. Practice makes perfect. There we go. again. Now, let's test each note, play it, and see if it's good enough to tune the rest of the octave. C, D sharp, and C sharp. They're all relatively a little hot. I'm just going to leave it because they're all relative uh, high when this happens it's what's happening is the strings are going down and then because of the stretch these are actually going up than when we tuned it so they'll even raise higher when you release the tension on these so that's why um, we're going to have to tune it again by ear so this section and this, at once it's done by octaves, you'll notice the pitch raise up all together for all the notes. So, let's do this octave. What I want to do is tune this. And there's a technique when you get to this part, you have to take the mute and there's the damper felt and put it right under the felt the other mute right close to the bridge. So sometimes it doesn't work close to the bridge. Sometimes you gotta get both of them as far down as you can as close to the felt as you can. Yeah, 
Okay, just angle the uh, mute. Sometimes it works to switch it, put the right and then top. And the right. There we go, that's better. enough because we're going to, have to tune it again. One other octave I want to do is the more bottom octave. Now the good news is this uh, part of the piano is the most difficult part to tune because you don't you hardly use any movement here but the good news is the bass side is much easier to tune because you got less strings and it's, the bass is just not as picky with uh, st string movement like the treble. So I'm going to mute the right string. I'm going to go to the top pen. tune a piano with the tuning app. You want to go each octave. Now this one I've already tuned it. Uh, the correct tuning as this. This is what I tuned up to. So yours will sound out of tune on these upper octaves and lower ones. So uh, after you're done tuning what I suggest is wait a day or two or even three days. Wait for the piano to stabilize itself and then go back and tune it again. Now, if it's really bad, you can use the tuning app again and tune it again, try to get it. But if it's tuned higher, let's say everything's higher, that's fine. It just means your C256 will be a little bit higher in pitch. Uh, as long as it's all relatively tuned to each other, if it's higher, that's fine. Uh, but if you really want it at C256, you're going to have to tune it at least one more time with the tuner, get it down, and then go back. We are now ready to begin to tune by ear. I hope you were successful in tuning the octaves up here and in the bottom octaves as well. When we tune by ear, we're still going to use the tuning app as a reference in case we go way off. But you probably won't need it because we're going to follow intervals and we're going to tune to those specific intervals. So, C is our reference. When I look at the app, it's dead on like I want it. And how we're going to tune the next note will be G. Now, I already tuned this one, but I want you to hear a difference and how this is tuned, how I move it. Notice on the tuning app, it says it's a little high. It's actually in tune. When I mute the strings, the center string, if I just, just move the hand, not actually move the pen, just, we're gonna kinda like just bend it. When I move it down, it goes out of tune. Then I go up. It's too high. So I want to get it in between that range. Now the technique we were trying to explain earlier is we want to go higher in pitch and then go slightly lower. That sounds right on. How I test is I play either the C and the D. 
with try to pull it down. Okay, I'm liking that. It's good. Now let's match them. adjust it. Let's go now to the F. We're going to use C as a reference. Tune that interval next. Tune it up high. That's how it sounds like one note. in tune 
with the C. I should be in tune with the G. I want to lower it slightly. after each one. Remember, you're supposed to play it hard. Make sure it stays. Looks like they are. But I forgot to mention that. Okay, we use the A to E. Now it's the B to E.
one now of the Y at this scale is the octave. So let's tune the octave key. just the chords. F chord. Uh, the F could be a little better. Maybe uh, sounds like the A, I have to readjust that. But before we go on, just know you can play with it, take your time. Now we're going to tune the black keys. We'll use G as a reference. Make sure your G is really accurate because you use that a lot as a reference. So E flat now. Now 
I'm getting it in tune, I have I want to pull it up and then tune it. these black keys. Now we use the A sharp, I'm no, sorry, G sharp, the A flat, to tune the C sharp D flat. tritone and it doesn't work really with any of the chords but what we do is we tune it to the D. scale for just intonation. Now if you tune the root as D, of course it will work, but we're to C. Let's try that. So when we play the chords, we play in the key of C, or C, C minor, or A flat major. Everything sounds good. I'm, I think I need to readjust the uh, and it's pretty much that's good. Now we're going to do C minor. Not bad. Okay, now A flat major. This D sharp. I mean, C sharp, D flat, sounds out of tune. So I'm going to have to readjust the D flat. Sometimes that happens, it just goes flat on you. I remember I'm going to do the pounding technique. I haven't done that for all the notes, so excuse me if I haven't. Okay, it's saying I'm high on the tuning app. Broke the string there and then broke the tuning pin in the foot. That's what we wanted. So 
satisfied with that. Okay. Let's see if we get that A better. So we're going to use the E as a reference. That's much better, I believe. Okay, so that's how you tune a piano by ear to just intonation. I hope this helps you. You're going to have to continue and tune the octaves After I finish tuning the whole piano and the octaves, I fine tune the tempered scale. And just for reference, I'm going to play each note. And you can look at it on the tuner app and see how close the notes are relative to the tuner, how it reads it. So let's start with middle C. Notice each one C sharp goes almost to the equals. Give it a few seconds. It goes down the pitch a little bit. The only one that seemed a little higher was the A sharp. And I retuned it. I tried to go a little lower, it went out of tune. So the app is pretty accurate. You know, it almost goes down to equal for some, plus three, others a little higher, others a little lower. So I hope you were successful in tuning your piano. Uh, check out more videos in the future. Thanks for watching.